Getting started in Fusion 360, we're going to go to Insert and scroll down to Insert Mesh. From here, we're going to select our STL file that we want to edit. Open and give it a little bit of time. So I'm running a, a laptop. It's a, about a three-year-old Ultrabook, so it's uh, not the fastest machine. No integrated graphics, or it's uh, integrated graphics, no uh, external graphics. So I'm going to flip the direction here to drop it in so it's in the up position. I'm going to leave that inch because if I change it to metric, it makes it way big. We're going to keep it small even though the units are, technically are incorrect. So we're going to go over to our mesh tools and we're going to get started by generating face groups. This is going to break the mesh up into smaller pieces that we can then edit. So I'm going to start with a fast type, um, just because there's a lot of faces, and this is going to be real time. We just have to be a little bit patient with it and let it do its thinking. So here we are. Now each one of these colors is going to be a different face group. You should be able to click on each one and then edit them. Realistically, I'm looking just at the head of this octopus. We're going to do something different with his eye here. So we'll go select it and we're going to go to direct edit. This is about the best way I've found to edit the meshes. So go up here, you can see your different selections. In this case, we're going to go triangles because the whole head is one face group. And this brush is massive. So we're going to go ahead and scale the brush down just a little bit, just so we have less to repair. So uh, go ahead and select. And now I'm going to hit the delete key and that will delete all the mesh around this eye socket that's selected. So now we have a hole. Now we can go up here to repair and we select this. Oh, I forgot to close out of this mesh selection palette. So I'll go ahead and finish that. Still thinking here. I'm leaving this real time just so you can see you don't need a powerhouse computer to do these. You just need some patience and be willing to uh, wait for it to think. Don't worry, I'm not going to let this make you wait through all the thinking that my laptop does. I'm just doing this in this intro just to give you a rough idea. The longer wait times I do, speed them up and uh, you'll see that later. Okay, so now that that's done thinking, if we expand the details here, you can see all the different objects or areas where there's some problems. You can see them kind of highlighted where the tentacles are actually interfering with each other. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and this is going to start thinking its way through repairing this mesh. If you hit any key, it'll come up with that error message. Or if you click on something, it's going to come up and say it's not responding. Go ahead and just wait for it. Again, demonstrating to, to show that it just takes some patience. So here it is. It's a little creepy, but it works. Cleared up our mesh, and it looks like it did fairly well. It's not too obtrusive. Uh, definitely keeps some of the curvature there. Not as fine, obviously, because we have fewer triangles but it's still, it's close enough that we can work with it. If we did want to break this up, we can go up here to remesh and it'll break down those triangles into different areas, but it's going to do the entire head when it does it. So I don't want to do that right now. That's not the point of this tutorial. So we're going to go up here and we're going to modify and create, convert to a mesh. So this is the free option here on the far left. We're going to go ahead and leave that because this is a very large model. And at this point, I'm now at six time, 16 times speed on 
uh, this recording. So this actually took about, I believe, eight, eight and a half minutes in order to convert all this. You can see it's my cursor's not moving because I'm not sitting at my computer. I'm just waiting for it. Should be converted over in any second. Now, there we go. So now we have our mesh. And we can start working on this next stage. Now from here, we have a few different options. We can go into our surface tools. We can go into our solid tools and we can do um, some different features. doesn't matter. The software now considers this a geometric uh, model. So we can go to create tab here and go down and I'm gonna create a form. So we have a quad ball, which gives you a little more options than a regular sphere. But if I go to create, I can go down and get a traditional sphere. Since I'm not gonna be manipulating this or contorting it, I'm just gonna leave it as a round sphere. I'll go ahead and select that option. So I'll just click out here in space and create my sphere. Kind of drag, bring it out, and let's zoom in. Eight, uh, so drag it around a little bit, scale it. Thinking this is probably about right. So I'm gonna hit okay to accept that. And I'm gonna now press M, select it and press M for move. So I'm gonna be moving around with this triad here. and lose my spatial orientation. Still getting a little adjusted onto this. Um, my preferred software, or what I use typically is SOLIDWORKS. So I'm still learning this software a little bit or adjusting to the, the nuances of the, the user interface. So go ahead and rotate around here. I'm way off, so we'll go ahead and keep adjusting and manipulating until I get it right where I, right about where I want it. The key to this is make sure you're moving your uh, your view around so that you can see from all different angles where you actually have your sphere. So as we rotate around, you actually see it's inside the head right now. So I'm gonna scoot it back out a little bit. I'll zoom in, take a little bit closer look and we'll rotate around a little bit more. You can see there's a light shade to it and that's actually the cutoff where it's cutting through the model. So it kind of gives me an idea of where the sphere is sitting on the model and where they intersect. So you can keep rotating around here. I'm gonna go ahead and accept it where it is and we'll let it think. Don't panic. All right. So now we have two individual components here in our design tree. We'll go ahead and finish the form. And there it is. Probably could have moved it to the right a little bit more but I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it for now. So if we expand this bodies option here, we can see all the individual components that make up this octopus model. What I'm looking for at this point is the two body components that make up the head and the mesh sphere that I just created. The mesh sphere should be pretty easy because it's not gonna be labeled as octopus spiral. So body 42, that's our new component. And coincidentally, this 40th component in the octopus is gonna be the head, which is what we want. So we're gonna use this combine command and we'll select these two, go up to combine. And we'll give it a moment to think. And when this dialog pops up, here it'll show we have a target body, we have a tool body, and we're gonna use the join feature here on the left. I hit okay. And now we're gonna let this thing think. So here we are. This is the new model combined. We'll rotate it around so you can see it. And that's gonna be our new mesh that we will spit out as a STL for our printer. If the traditional like and subscribe isn't enough for you, feel free to follow the links in the description below to find out how you can reach out to me, learn more, as well as find out how to support the channel through my website, 
products as well as Patreon. I greatly appreciate the support and look forward to making more videos in the future.